Agape. Thank you for joining us again for the Word on Wednesday. I'm excited and just glad to be in the, in the land of the living one more, one more time, one more day uh, for God's blessing upon my life. And I know that God has been blessing your life. And so I'm excited again just to be connected with each of you, wherever you may be. We are connected spiritually. Amen. I'm praying for you, have been consistently praying for you, and I'm excited to continue uh, in the word of God tonight. Let's pray. Eternal God, we thank you for this time of sharing, this time of teaching. We pray that your word will open up into our hearts and our minds so that we can be better than what we were when we started this evening. Uh, God, thank you for those who have connected with us and are connecting with us virtually. We pray for blessings upon each of their lives. In Jesus' name we pray. And all of God's people say it. Amen. All right, let's get back into the word tonight. We've been talking about God's infallible word. And over the last couple of weeks, we've talked about the revealed word and the inspired word. And so tonight we're going to move on. We're going to begin talking about the preserved word, the preserved word. The Bible is the preserved word. In other words, God's word has been preserved. This is important because when we talk about inspiration, we talked about inspiration last night. Obviously, the thing that is inspired is the original copy. The original manuscript is what has been inspired. Now, in our contemporary translations, we have found we have more access to much later manuscripts than did those who translated the King James in the latter part of the 16th century and the early parts of the 17th century. And so now we can go back to the time because of this, we can go back to the time that the Bible was actually written. And so the more we discover, uh, as we look at that, the more we discover what we have is right. In other words, there is no doubt in our minds, the Bible is right. It has been proven. It has gone back from where we are all the way back, basically to the time the Bible was written. And guess what? We know it's right. There's no error in this. There, there's no mistake in this. There's not two or three or four or five different uh, Bibles. There's one Bible. And so now, since we were able, we've been able to go back and go through translation over translation, we have not discovered any conflicts that alter the basic beliefs that we have. Oh my God, think about that. Through generation and through generations, we have not discovered conflicts or any problems or errors that would alter the belief, basic beliefs that we have. It was the same yesterday, today, and it'll be the same tomorrow. All right. So that, that's the first part of what we're going to be dealing with as we look as we're looking at the Bible is the preserved word. The Bible is the preserved word of God. It's been preserved. It's been kept. Let me share this with you. The Bible is the preserved word. The same God who inspired it and revealed it has protected its transcription down to us. In other words, through all these generations, God has protected. It has not changed. That's the key. The word has been the same from the beginning through generations on top of generations, through centuries upon top of centuries. It has not changed. Our basic beliefs have not been altered. That's the preserved word. That's the first part of what we're getting into tonight, the preserved word. We're going to move into something else I want to share uh, that we can we can uh, tack on to the preserved word. The imparted word. The imparted word. Now, we talked about the preserved, the preserved word first. 
but now it's the imparted word. Been preserved, now it's going out. The preserved word. So I want to, I want to spend a little time on that tonight. It is one thing for the Holy Spirit to reveal to us the word of God, but it is another thing for us to appropriate the truth of it. Then in other words, the truth is suitable, using the truth for what it's supposed to be used for. The Bible is the important word for those who walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. I want that to sink in. The Bible is the important word for those who walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives spiritual understanding to those who belong to him. Oh, let, let, let's look at that again. Let's look at the gift. The Bible is the important word for those who walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. Now look, now look what, I, what I said. The Holy Spirit is the important word for those who walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. In other words, when you the Bible is vital when you're walking in the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives spiritual understanding to those who belong to him. In other words, if you don't belong to him, you will never receive spiritual understanding. Oh, my, my, my. You will never receive spiritual understanding if you don't belong to God. And then you have to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. And then the Holy Spirit gives you understanding of the Word of God. That's why some folks cannot understand the Word of God because they're not walking in the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, let me share this with you. It does not matter. We'll talk about this a little bit uh, later. It does not matter how smart you are, how educated you are. If you are not walking in the power of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will not give you spiritual understanding of the word of God because you don't belong to him. In other words, you've got to be connected with him to get access to what he wants you to know and understand. All right, let, let me go back to this. Right here, before we move on, it is one thing for the Holy Spirit to reveal to us the Word of God. It is another thing for us to appropriate the truth. Oh, my goodness. My goodness. Let, let me share this. John 16, 12 and 15. I still have many things to tell you, but you cannot bear them now. Everything the Father has is mine. This is why I told you that he takes from what is mine and will declare it to you, it to you. The Holy Spirit will reveal to us that which we need to know. Oh, my goodness. Think about that. The Holy Spirit will reveal to us that which we need to know. That's it. Now, if it's, if it's not for us to know, then the Holy Spirit will not reveal it to us. I, I taught a class uh, many, 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 many years ago uh, about, uh, let me see, experiencing God. And one of the things is that God only lets us know on a need-to-know basis. That's it. God only lets us know on a need-to-know basis. Now, now, no, no, think about that. The Holy Spirit will reveal to us that which we need to know. What we don't need to know, the Holy Spirit is not going to reveal to us because he only reveals to us what we need to know. That's it. Go back and share this one more time. I still have many things to tell you, but you cannot bear them all. Everything the Father has is mine. This is why I told you that he takes from what is mine and will declare it to you. Oh my goodness. Okay, let me say this one more time. The Holy Spirit will reveal to us that which we need to know. Now, remember now, he's only going to reveal to us and give us understanding if we're walking by the power of the Holy Spirit. If we're walking with him, we belong to him. That's the only time he's going to reveal to us what we need to know then. 
We'll walk with him, walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. We belong to him, but he still is only going to let us know or reveal to us what we need to know at that given time in our life. All right. For who among men knows the thoughts of man except the spirit of the spirit of the man that is in him? In the same way, no, no one knows the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. Now, we have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit who comes from God, so that we may understand what has been freely given to us by God. We also speak those things, these things, not in words taught by human wisdom, but in those taught by the spirit, explaining spiritual things to spiritual people. But the unbeliever does not welcome what comes from God's spirit because it is foolishness to him. He is not able to understand it since it is evaluated spiritually. 1 Corinthians 2, 11 through 14, Holman Christian Standard Bible. Now, here we have the reminder that people who are not saved cannot appropriate the word of God. Oh, my goodness. Now, now I, want, I want to clarify this. I want to make it clear. It says, People who are not saved cannot appropriate the word of God. It does not say people who don't go to church, because there's some people in the church who are not saved. It says you cannot understand the word and get revelation of the word because you're not saved. Because they do not have spiritual a spiritual disposition that allow God's spirit freedom to work in their life. Oh my God, my God, that, that's preaching music right there. I didn't preach that, sing that. But they do not, because they do not have spiritual, a spiritual disposition that allows God's spirit freedom to work in their life. Now, look, a spiritual disposition and then the freedom the, to allow God's spirit freedom to work in their lives. That's key. You got to have the let the spirit work freedom first, but you got to have a spiritual disposition. A, a spiritual disposition is not an outside look. It's an inside look. The spiritual disposition is who you are. Your character as a spiritual person, as a Christian, your life as a Christian, your every movement as a Christian, your disposition. That's who you are, how you live it, how you move it. All right. This is it. what the scripture we read was a reminder that people who are not saved cannot appropriate the word of God. You can't use it. You can't understand it because they do not have spiritual, a spiritual disposition that allows God's spirit freedom to work in their life. That's enough. That's a mouthful. Are you, are you allowing God's spirit freedom to work in your life? That's the key. When there's freedom, that means it can go any way it wants to do what it needs to do. Allowing God's uh, spirit freedom to work in their lives. Oh, my goodness. All right. Let, let me share this. Let me share this. The Holy Spirit helps us to understand the Bible. That's it. The Holy Spirit helps us to understand the Bible. Now, this understanding is for all of God's children. <laughs> let, let, me, let me say all this again. Somebody, somebody did, this was too heavy, too deep for somebody, so I'm gonna, let me say it a little slower. The Holy Spirit helps us to understand the Bible. This understanding is for all of God's children. Now, there are some folks, now check this out, there are some folks who think one has to be a seminary graduate, somebody, or they need a PhD. In order to understand the Bible, they have to have all this education to understand the Bible. That is not true. 
That is not true. That is a lie. You don't have to have all that to understand the Bible. Let me let me share this scripture with you. First of all, you should know this. No prophecy of scripture comes from one's own interpretation. Let me say it again. You should know this. No prophecy of scripture comes from one's own interpretation. This means the proper understanding of the Bible is no secret. Let, let me say, let me share it again. No prophecy of scripture comes from one's own interpretation. Now, remember what we said. You, you have to be walking in the power of the Holy Spirit and then have the disposition to allow the Holy Spirit to walk freely, to work freely in your life for the revelation of the scriptures. For the revelation of scriptures. And you don't have to be someone that has a seminary degree or a PhD. You just have to be someone that allows the Holy Spirit to reveal itself, to work in your life, to be following God, to have that Christian disposition, which I am, I, I belong to him. Okay? The proper understanding of the Bible is no secret. There's nothing that somebody said, well, you got to be at this level to understand the Bible. You got to have all this education. That's not true. Okay? That is not true. Now, God has revealed to us the deep things of the word. That's, a God, that's what God is doing. When we read the Bible, when we read scripture, and we're allowing the Holy Spirit to move freely, God is revealing to us the deep things of the word. Now, the Apostle Paul said this, but it is written, what I did not see, what ear did not hear, whatever entered into the human mind, God prepared this for those who love him. Now God prepared this for those who love him. Now God has revealed these things to us by the Spirit for the depths of God. Woo, my God, my God, my God. God reveals to us the deep things of the word. Woo. Think about that. God reveals to us the deep things of the word through his Holy Spirit. Let, let's go back and share this one more time before we leave. What I did not see, what ear did not hear, and whatever into the human mind, God prepared this for those who love him. Now God prepared this for those who love him. Now God has revealed these things to us by the Spirit for the depths of God. Oh my God, the deep things of God. Let me share this. The simplest saint, the most humble Christian can understand the tremendous eternal truth in the word of God through the power of the Holy Spirit. We can ask God to bless us and impart to us an understanding of his word. The Bible is for our reading, our study, our edification. It is the word of God hidden in our hearts that will protect us and keep us from sin. Now, when we place God's word in our hearts, he would impart to us spiritual and eternal truths. Truth. And one of the conditions for our receiving more understanding is for us to live the understanding we have. Now, let me share it. This is going to be the last slide for tonight. Jesus said this. If anyone wants to do his will, he will understand whether the teaching is from God or if I am speaking on my own. John 7, 17. Let me read it one more time. If anyone wants to do his will, he, was, he will understand whether the teaching is from God or if I am speaking on my own. Now, this is a valid principle. If any man wants to do his will, he will understand. We do not, we do what we know 
to do. And God will deep give us deeper understanding. We must obey the word of God. Now, here again. If any man wants to do his will, he will understand. That's it. We do, here we go, we do what we know to do. And when we follow God, God will give us a deeper understanding of his word. And the bottom line is, we must obey the imparted word of God. All right. Bless you. Bless you. I pray uh, that this has been, been a word that will kind of really get into you to understand the Holy Spirit moving and providing revelation to you, providing understanding to you. Next week, we've got... We're going to probably finish out. We've got about three little topics I want to touch on uh, next week. Finish out this about God's infallible word. Oh, okay. I'm blessed. I counted a blessing that I'm able to share with you that you connected with me. And because you've connected with me, I know God is going to bless your life because you've been obedient to him. Again, thank you for joining us. Do me a favor. Click the like button. Uh, on your screen. Uh, just say, hey, Pastor, I like it. I like it. I like it. I'm praying for you. Continue to pray for one another. Uh, and I thank you for connecting with us uh, virtually as well as in person. I thank you for what you do. I'm I'm just a believer. God has blessed us to have two churches, one virtual, one in person, but it's all the same because God's word never goes out or comes back void. So I'm praying for you. Continue to pray for one another. Again, pray for one another. I thank you for what you're doing, what your obedience is and agreement is with God and you're giving. I thank God for you, for you listening to God and doing what he told you to do. And because you've been obedient, God has done everything that he said he was going to do. And if he hasn't done it, it's getting ready to happen for you soon. Again, my wife sends her love to you. God bless all of you. Thank you for connecting with us. I'm praying that I'll see you soon, whether I hear you on Monday morning prayer, Tuesday noonday Bible study on Zoom, or Wednesday um, or Tuesday night, every other Tuesday night for women's Bible study at the church, uh, Wednesday Word, uh, Sunday morning YouTube Bible study, or in person, and then the service online or in person. So, I'll connect with you one way or the other. Again, God bless you. Thank you again. I love you. Let's pray. Eternal God, we thank you for this time of sharing, this time of teaching. We pray, God, that your spirit will begin to move in us even more as we allow it the freedom to do it as we follow you. God, we honor you. We thank you. And we pray for blessings upon each of those who have connected with us. In Jesus' name, we pray. And all of God's people said, Amen. God bless you.